Right, so when Paul says, How shall we live that our debt to sin live any longer therein? And then a few verses he says, He that is dead is freed, or in other words, justified. What he is saying is that when you're justified, you don't keep on sinning. So notice um, verse 6, um, it says, Knowing that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, let, sorry, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Now, is there a word in verse 6 that is in connection with verse 7, that being dead? It's the word crucified. So when we are crucified, the body of sin is destroyed and we are dead to sin. That there is, we can see a connection right there. So let's um, let the Bible, don't take my word for it, let the Bible answer. So let's just turn to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2 verse 16 yeah we'll start with verse 16 and we will continue up to verse 20 verse 16 says knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by the faith of Jesus Christ even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Jesus Christ and not by the works of the law for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified so I'm, I've made a diagram and I'm going to put it at the end of the video um, this part 2 we're on so at the end of part 2 I'm going to um, put a diagram that just a little simple diagram I made up so um, what we see in verse 16 is that we live by the faith of Jesus Christ so let's see in verse 17 it says but if while we seek to be justified by Christ we ourselves are found sinners is therefore Christ the minister of sin God forbid so um, if we seek to be justified what Paul is saying is are we going to keep on sinning no Christ is going to justify you is he going to justify you while you practice known sins and the answer is obviously no because it even says clearly that Christ is not the minister of sins so in verse 17 the faith of Jesus Christ convicts us from our sins okay so um, what we can see from here is now that if we go to verse 20 it will now give up a, a brief sum of the whole situation so verse 20 says I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me now verse 20 is the same language saying I am crucified with Christ so when we see the same language we see a connection what we see is if I am justified by the faith of Jesus Christ and if I am crucified by the faith of Jesus Christ that must mean that to be justified is to be crucified so it's for example if A and B have the same method or mechanism A must equal B it's simple logic so you could say A is I am justified by the faith of Jesus Christ B when I am crucified I live by the faith of Jesus Christ so to clarify um, so yeah just to clarify when I am crucified with Christ Christ lives in me so when I ex exercise faith in my life who is it that is exercising faith in my life in my crucified life who's the one that's exercising the faith well it's Christ himself because when I'm dead faith is now exercised in the living Christ so you're dead to sin and your life to Christ so Christ lives in you so when I'm justified I live by the faith of Jesus Christ 
so to be justified Christ must live in me so to have the righteousness of Christ is not just the outward as I explained in Timothy in part 1 um, Christ must live in you as well because, cruci because when you're crucified Christ lives in you and then the faith of Jesus can then be exercised when justified you live by the faith of Jesus Christ so if I give an example a weightlifter you cannot start going into the Olympics lifting uh, 200 pounds or I don't know how heavy these weights are these days but a simple person with you know, no muscle or he can't go and start lifting weights in the Olympics he has to first go through training so once he's trained he's ready he can then go in so it does take a few steps you can't just say I have the righteousness of Christ and I'm living in sin you have to accept Christ and allow Christ to live in you so you're no longer living in sin so I hope that really clears some things up now um, so it all works together justification crucifixion and the faith of Jesus Christ they all work as one so now um, the question is what is the faith of Jesus Christ so a prime, um, a prime example in the context is if you look at what happened before Christ was about to be crucified he didn't, he didn't even want to go through the um, death on the cross he um, even went to his father and said if it be possible let this cup pass from me so we can see clearly he didn't want to go through it but he didn't stop there he said not my will but your will be done so what we can see here is that his we wouldn't say Christ was not sinful so his human side wanted to sorry his human side wanted to stay away from going through the process of dying on the cross but the spiritual side was saying I will do your will I'm not going to allow the flesh to have its way but I'm going to obey you so to overcome and to have the faith of Christ we have to allow our human nature to be sub in an under submission through the faith of Jesus Christ or through the will it's like for example um, to have the faith of Jesus Christ is like saying when somebody goes through baptism they can look at it just as somebody going down in water and coming back up but the faith is that Christ, the Father and the Holy Spirit are there to witness that. We may not be able to see them physically, but we are there by faith. By faith we know that they're there to witness the baptism. Um, also, we can't see Christ in the heavenly sanctuary right now, in the most holy pleading on our behalf. When we pray and ask the Lord for forgiveness, we can't see Christ say, I forgive you, but by faith, we are forgiven and the same with um, just the time of trouble for example there's going to be a group of people when they see the destruction happening all around them they're going to be wondering I'm on my own or they're going to have the faith of Christ to say no Christ is with me even though the time of trouble is here and we are the only people standing so with the righteousness of Christ you can't be practicing sins so when you hear people say I am converted I can sin all I want because I'm under the grace and I can continue to work I can continue willfully sinning that is not only tempting God but that's taking advantage of his grace and that is you can even say calling the Lord's name in vain because the Bible says you can't practice willful sins and have the righteousness of Christ on you so that's even breaking the commandment um, that I'll do, um, don't take the Lord's name in vain so it is a very very um, deep subject to study um, Paul himself even Peter he said about Paul's writing if we don't understand the people who are unlearned if they don't understand it clearly then it could lead to their own destruction and I can actually see this taking place because there's many people around the world saying I'm not under the law I'm under grace so that means I can sin all I want but I'll be under the grace of Christ not knowing that not being under the law means not being under the penalty of the law and not to say I am free to sin so